So what subject we were on? I can't remember this. Oh, that's right. Yeah. How could I forget? No, no, somebody, somebody there was just asking you a question. That's right. So do you remember what the question was, Matt? No. You don't? No. It's fair. Like. It was what, was it, what, what are the spirits do? Oh, how do the spirits interfere? Okay. Um, yeah, can we just... So you can ask the question. Uh, my question was, um, how do spirits interfere with a couple if they're not happy with which, if the parent has passed over another spirit, how do they, do they physically interfere or do they uh, There's interfere? lots of ways they can interfere depending on the emotions of the couple. So this is where, all, remember everything gets back to the emotions that you have within you and what that attracts. So imagine you've got, you've got the married couple or partnered couple here on the earth, right? And I'm always drawing heterosexual ones because obviously 80% of us are about that. So, so we've got the married or partnered couple here on earth. We've got the spirit, maybe, maybe let's say it's the wife's mother who passed. And she's never been happy with the relationship. She's never been happy with the fact that she's hooked up with this guy she just doesn't like. It's just something about this guy she doesn't like, right? There's a lot of different ways she can impact the relationship if, if these two are not dealing with their emotions. So that's the big if. If they are working through their emotions, then whatever she does can't have any lasting impact upon the relationship. But if they're not working through her emotions, let's look at some of the emotions. Let's say the wife um, feels a deep desire to please her mother that she never got rid of while she was on earth. Then what the mother will do was keep dropping thoughts into the wife's mind, mm. oh, sorry, into the daughter's mind, about this man and how she's not pleasing her mother by being with this man. So you imagine that, like, you look at the man, yeah, he's no good for you. You, know, you look at the man and the instant you look at him, you get a thought, he's no good for you. And you imagine that dropped into you 20 times today. That's going to have an effect on you, isn't it? If you're hooked into... And the, the emotion that allows that thought to drop into your mind is the fact that you're seeking your mother's approval still. Does that make sense? Now, if you release the emotion of seeking your mother's approval, your mother won't even be able to drop that thought into your mind. Does that make sense to everyone? So, so what's actually happening is this woman's emotions attract the mother who's upset with this partnership and then the way that this mother can affect her is by dropping thoughts into her mind. Because she emotionally allows her mother's interference. She's a, she has the emotion that her mother's emotions are important to her. Because of that, she allows her mother's interference. And she could drop all sorts of things, you know. He might have been out a bit late with the guys one evening. The thought is, he was out with a woman. You know, it might not even be true. But the mother might continue to do that just to stir up problems. All right? So this is why spirit, shall we call it inspiration, is not always trustworthy. Spirit inspiration is not always trustworthy because many times spirits have ulterior motives to drop thoughts into people's minds. Now let's say you've got a parent who have passed and they've got three or four siblings and there's problems between the siblings because of different things. Those parents can go from one sibling to another sibling telling them different stories still. Just to cause trouble, just to cause disharmony between them. This happens all the time, depending on the emotion of the parents and what they want to avoid in the spirit world as well. Don't they have anything better to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't have to go and cook. They don't have to clean. They don't have to find a place to live because there's already got one, even though it might not be very pleasant. And so what, what will you do if all of the, You think of how much of your time last week was taken up with all those things. Mm. Cooking, cleaning, and... Shopping. Working, shopping. Ironing. Ironing. <laughs> <laughs> When you think of your whole week, how much of your week was taken up with all that? Like, isn't it like three quarters of your week? You imagine you now have none of that to do. 
Yes. How are you going to fill that time? Maybe they're asleep. <laughs> no, they don't sleep. No, they don't need to sleep. They, they rest, but they don't need to sleep. So you imagine that. So, so what would you do? What you would do is everything that your emotions drag you into doing. So if your emotions are, I'm really upset with my daughter, then you're going to be hanging around your daughter telling her you're upset with her. You know, whether she can hear or not, it's immaterial. You're just going to be pushing those emotions at her. If your emotions are you're upset with something going on in the Middle East, you'll nip over to the Middle East and embroil yourself in that. Whatever your emotions take you to is where you will go. They only learn and grow in the spirit world if they want to. And there's lots and lots of people on earth who pass never wanting to grow on the earth. And so when they pass into the spirit world, they don't want to grow there either. So they stay in these locations doing these things, some of them for thousands of years, until they want to grow. See, there's a big assumption that most of us have is that as soon as you pass into the spirit world, you have this automatic enlightenment, and all of a sudden you know everything, and isn't it wonderful? That's not how it is. You know what you know as soon as you pass in the spirit world? One more thing generally that you know when you're here on earth. And that is that you died and there is a spirit world. <laughs> and even then it's not always that that you know. Many of them don't even realise they've died. So, you know, they don't even know that. Jan? Um, so if the, say for instance, the daughter on mm -hmm. earth was processing was processing her emotions. Yeah. One of the emotions she'd be processing here is a need of approval from the mother. The mother. The mother wouldn't have as much of an influence. Would have zero influence. Even though she hasn't moved on. Even the though mother, the mother. If the mother was on earth as well, you're saying, no, or in the spirit world, doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, she would have no influence because the daughter is processing her emotion and not projecting the emotion yeah. at the husband. The only way that she can have influence is to get the daughter to blame the husband, isn't it? That's the only way that she can have influence. If the daughter lets herself feel her own emotion and allows the emotion to be processed, then how can the mother influence this relationship? She can't. And that's why, can you see that you have the most power when you're processing your emotion. You have the least amount of power when you're in denial of your emotion. Because every emotion you're in denial of is an emotion someone else, either on earth or in the spirit world, can manipulate. That's when you have the least amount of power. You have the most amount of power when you're feeling your emotions because no one can manipulate them while you're feeling them. You're actually just feeling them and letting them pass through you. Jen? Um, I had an Wait for the uh, mic, please. I had an experience with brain last night that's quite a frequent recurrence in our relationship. Yep. I'd like to expose it because I, I think I... I think I've just come to the realisation of what it is. Yep. Graham says to me at times that he doesn't hear me speaking. Yep. And that it's coming from a different place within me. Yes. Yet when I speak, it feels like me. It sounds like me to me. Yep. <laughs> but he says it's not me. Yes. In those moments, I hate him. Yep. I don't want to be with him. Yep. I can't see any good in him. Totally opposite to what happens. To what you normally feel for when it kind of withdraws. But yep. I didn't understand the withdrawal until you were just talking about that. Yep. Now I had a conversation. So with do you, can I ask you though now? You know what's happening now. What's happening? I think I have this. No, I don't think. I I know I have an unresolved relationship with my mother. Yep. Now I'm not sure whether it, that this is my mother who is actually doing this, or whether there are other spirit influences. Yeah, there's both. But Graham says to me that he can't hear me, and in those moments, it feels like me. Yep. To me, it sounds like me. I'm, I'm like working the billy out of process as many emotions as comes up yep. with diligence and commitment is yep. the word. Yep. But yet there are frequent incidences where 
I just don't want to ever see Graham again. All right. One emotion you have still within you is anger towards men. You know that, don't you? That emotion is there. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not saying you're not dealing with it because I know you are. But that emotion, okay, that emotion of rage is within you towards men. Okay. Yep. And you know what it's linked to. We've talked a bit about it, like in yeah. terms of what your dad's done and so forth. Yeah. And how men have affected you in the past because of that. So that, that anger and rage towards men is a doorway that spirits can now use to manipulate you. <coughs> What's actually happening for you, Jen, is that there's a number, there's a few unresolved emotions still within. And because you are highly mediumistic, sometimes you don't even can't even tell the difference when you're influenced and when you're not influenced. That's exactly what I was talking to James about in the break. Yep. And and that's but one it's thing. It's like I'm out of the way and the spirit just speak see yep. right now I cannot tell you whether this is me, Jennifer, communicating with you, or whether this is the spirit speaking through me. No, I, I know when I'm getting either. I know you now are speaking to me. And the Graham is very sensitive to you, he will know too. I know it's you speaking to me. When you wrote this letter you wrote to me, Jen wrote a letter to me a few days ago, I gather, um, about, about your friend. Yes. That's not you. That isn't me. You didn't write any of that. Okay. That was a Mormon spirit in the spirit world who wrote that. So is that still, am I still responsible for that if that spirit speaks through me? You're responsible for the fact that there's a law of attraction going on between you and some Mormon spirits who would cause you to write that. And all you're responsible for is the emotion that allows you to not see it, if that makes sense. So in other words, there's an emotion. There's an emotion in you, unresolved, about your religious life. Okay? They are connecting you. These Mormon spirits, which cause you to write that, are connecting to you through that unresolved emotion about religion. Does that make sense? In the case of sexual things, in the case of the anger with men, there's some women spirits with you that are very, very angry with men. And this anger with men, they're with you, and, when, and they trigger your own anger with men. And then they join in on the anger and the rage through you. Does that make sense? So what Graham's getting is not just you anymore. He's getting you and a few spirits projecting all this stuff with him. Does that make sense? Well, it isn't funny. It it's isn't not funny. It's, not it's funny. terrible. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's really terrible and it's damaging. And I'm getting to the point where my question during the break to James was about personal responsibility. I asked myself, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? Jen, I feel you are doing enough to deal with your emotion. So you are doing really well dealing with your emotion. Thank you. However, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no. yeah, the key is that there are there are always unresolved emotions within us until we're at one with God. Does that make sense? So there is some unresolved emotions in you. And in all of us there are unresolved emotions. And spirits can connect through the unresolved emotions in order to influence us and our behaviour. Now, the thing we need to do is own the emotion. When we choose to not own the emotion, that's when they can use us to damage others. So, for example, you're angry with men. One of the things you often say to me is, oh, I don't feel that so much anymore, but I, I can feel that strongly from you, and Graham gets a fair bit of it from you at times, right? So he knows it's there. You're angry with men. But you still have this desire to deny that emotion. And it's the desire to deny that emotion that allows these spirits to connect through you and then project a heap of anger at a man who's right next to you. Does that make sense? Now, if you were owning the underlying emotion, which is the grieving emotion about how men have treated you, you would never get into the anger with men, which would never then allow these spirits to actually connect into this anger and then manipulate this anger. To actually get to that rage is terrifying. Mm. Well, you don't want it. I'm saying you don't want to get to the rage. Right? In your case, you don't need to get to the rage. The rage is what came after another emotion, the grief, mm. the terrible feelings of shame and guilt and grief that you feel about your father molesting you. 
These are the emotions that you need to allow yourself to connect to. When you don't allow yourself to connect to those emotions, you will connect to this emotion. And when you connect to that emotion in an unresponsible way, when I say unresponsible, instead of owning it and going out and bashing a bag or something, what you're wanting to do in that particular instance is you want to harm a man. Right? Many of you ladies who have been abused will feel this way. You want the man to pay. Right? You want the man to pay for the damage that's been done to you. Right? Now, now often you, even, you don't care which man even. Many of you don't care which man. As long as a man pays, it doesn't even matter which man. And this is how many of these spirits feel too. Many of, particularly the female spirits who have passed, who have been abused too. They just want a man to pay. They don't care which man. They know that Graham's never done anything to cause you harm, but they don't care about that. He's a man. They just want him to pay. Right? And so what they do is they connect through this anger, this feeling of punishment, the desire for punishment that you have towards a male that's still within you. They connect to that and heighten that emotion to, to show you, in fact, that you have the emotion. Right? But often what we say is, oh, it's not my fault, it's the Spirit's fault. I don't have that emotion. But the law of attraction is showing you that you have that emotion. So if you own the emotion and then go deeper into the emotion and express this rage and anger even without there being a person involved, all the power of the interaction for the spirit goes. They, they no longer feel powerful because you're not hammering a man anymore. You're just hammering a bag, which isn't a man. And they're not, they're not satisfied with that. So they'll go and find another woman who will hammer a man instead. Does that make sense? Okay, so... I accept what you've said to me and the responsibility of it. Well, I'm not the words at the moment, but it's a start. Yep. Well, I have two male children, one of which is in the room. Yep. If I, I'm from childhood in deep, deep rage. Yep. And sad. I know when I prayed for, for a child that I prayed never to have girls and I ended up with two boys, but yet you are, are confronting me. I am feeling yep. my hatred for men, yet I have four children. Yep. And the boys, all through their life, would have felt like that emotion from you. So, you know, you know, don't you, that mum's yeah, in this anger with... Mom's yeah, mum's rage just with men. Just yeah, so what the dove... What they've learned to do is just detune themselves from your rage with men. That's what they've learned to do over a period of time. My but other boy, Nicholas, is furiously angry all the time. Well, he will be, because he, the rage projected at him from the moment he was conceived was unfair. And that's the feeling he feels, this deep feeling of unfairness. And both of your sons feel a deep feeling of unfairness when you get into a rage. So tell me... If I go away and feel this emotion, will that help them too? Yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. very much so. Um, I'm going to finish answering your question, though, Jen, to everyone else. If that's right. and you can hear it later. That's great. That's great. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> And that's the reason why Jen's progressing so rapidly. Yeah. Because she just allows herself to feel this rage she feels with men and just connects to it straight away. She doesn't put it off, doesn't wait for anything, doesn't wait for it to be ideal circumstances, <laughs> nothing. She just goes straight into it. And to be honest, the person who does that is going to be very, very, pro you know, they're going to progress in a very, very fast rate. But in terms of answering the rest of the question, because some days you'll look back at this tape and want to know the rest of the answer. <laughs> These uh, women in particular that are surrounding her who are getting angry are connecting through her because her anger, and there's quite a few of them now, um, it's so fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations, girls. Um, we've had four or five, just for the tape, we've had four or five uh, women leave just now because of Jen's beautiful example. Alright, so as these angry women connect to you through this anger, 
what they do <coughs> is they can now manipulate you. So if you're in a state where you want to punish a male for the anger you feel, what they will do is they'll, they'll want to raise this anger while you're in front of a male. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. So while you're there right in front of a man, what will happen is they'll just want to raise this anger in that, in that state with you. Because they, the thing they get out of that is that they are now hurting a male, and that's what they want. Yeah. Does that make sense? So for them, it's like fantastic that you're now hurting a man, and they're going to influence you to do that as powerfully as you can in that particular instance. By the way, this applies for men with women problems as well, as much as women with men. If I can just keep going for a bit first. What then happens is, because of this desire to punish that's within you, punishing the other, and by the way, a desire to punish is actually a desire to run away from the underlying grief you feel. So that's, so in the end, there's a desire to get away from an emotion inside of yourself that causes a desire to punish. So if I desire to punish a male, what actually, so if I'm more than desiring to punish a man, I've got all this unresolved anger towards man, any woman in the spirit world who was also in the same condition will connect through me, and they will express their anger through me while I'm expressing my anger. And they will heighten the experience. And the law of attraction is working perfectly because in that instance, what's going on is that I am being shown, if I'm the woman, I am being shown in that instance that I have deep rage and anger with men. Right? If I allow myself to see that. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the mumbo-jumbo that occurs in the New Age stuff sometimes, and a lot of the other beliefs that we may have, Say, oh, I've just got bad energy with me. Oh, all I've got to do is wipe myself clean, protect myself from that, and I'm right, sort of thing. None of that really is dealing with the underlying causal emotion. Right? The underlying causal emotion that causes attraction in the first place is my deep rage with men and a deep desire to punish a man for what a man has done to me. And so the woman, the women's spirits who are in the same condition, connect through me and connect through my emotion. And they will usually do it in front of the man, and I just dump a heap of verbal abuse on the man. Now, usually, interestingly enough, they will not choose to help you do it when you're with a man who might belt your back. Interestingly, what they will do, generally, is they will choose to do it with a man who will take it yeah. without doing anything back. Well, because if the man did something back, you would be hurt, and if you're hurt, then that takes away their power. They're no longer experiencing yeah. power over the man, they're now experiencing the man being powerful over them, which is their trigger of emotion. Wouldn't they just disengage? But that's what the spirit would disengage, certainly. As soon as they felt that, they would disengage. So they are going to cause you to do it with men who will take it, or with men who are in a better state of love than one will bop you in the nose. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's what they cause you to do. Now, the problem with that is those kind of men generally are the kinds of men you want in your life and you'll finish up, you know, harming the kind of men that are nice and in the end, you're not having a man in your life, which is in fact what these women in the spirit world believe you should have. You follow me? So they're getting exactly what they want in this situation and they're working through your own unresolved rage and anger to get into that. Now, how to undo all of that? It's quite simple. Under the anger is really, really painful grief about something a man has done to you or something a man has, men have done to women. It may be a multi-generational error of what men have done to women over history. And that's now within you, emotionally. And if you connect to that emotion, these spirits can no longer influence you at all. They can't have any effect whatsoever on you. Now let's reverse all of that and let's say this is a man now. Because it's, it's just as applicable for a man as it is with a woman. So I'm now a male on earth and I've got a lot of men spirits who have a belief that women are just to be used for sex. And I have the same belief inside of me, really. 
I try not to act upon it, but I just have this same feeling inside of me that in the end, women are lesser than a man and, and I can just use them. These men will now heighten that emotion, connect through me and set up sexual transactions where I can abuse women or that I treat women as if they're worthless. And these men will do that over and over and over again until I face the fact that I have that emotion within me that I need to deal with. Gee, the girls are doing so good at <laughs> The other a few weeks ago, we had a few people out at our place, and one day Millie took took quite a number of them out to do some anger work. And there was like scream after scream after scream <laughs> coming from different places in the in our property, and uh, and I don't know what the next door neighbours think, like because <laughs> I hear this scream echoing up the valley. <laughs> But it's really good to see people connect emotionally to their rage like that. AJ, can I just tell you, your mic is making a thundery sort of sound all the time. It's probably because I'm moving around all the time. It's thunder. Yeah. There is thunder outside. Oh, there is thunder outside. Oh, thunder outside. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's me. <laughs> worked extensively with men who are violent. And one thing I noticed is that once again they would tend to choose women who are going to take it. Yep. And also the other factor is that they find it very difficult to notice the moment they make a decision to be violent. And I'm just wondering how much of that has to do with the influence of the spirit. Yeah, the spirit. yeah very much influenced by the spirit. But, but it doesn't take away the responsibility of the person because the person does have this violent tendency towards women. So the person is angry towards women. And so therefore, you know, the spirit, all the spirit does is take advantage of a situation to express the rage. The, all the spirit, the spirit's not even interested in the man in most cases. All they're interested in expressing their rage towards the woman that's with the man because she's a woman. It's got nothing to do with who she is. It's just she's a, she's a woman. So I'm going to express all this rage towards this woman. And so a lot of times, the time that the switch occurs in the male, in the person, the person is not even aware of what's going on or, or, or you know, is uncertain. And this is why it's high, the switch is heightened by alcohol or drugs. Because the person has less personal awareness of their own emotional condition, which can easily then be influenced even to a greater degree by the spirit. And unfortunately, it's a lot of this intergender rage is actually continued by people in the spirit world. In fact, a lot of interracial rage is also continued by people who have passed in the spirit world. So what happens is you get people on earth in this rage who pass over in the rageful state, now wanting to connect to other people on earth and cause them to be in the same rageful state that they are in. And the only way to combat it is by choosing to feel the underlying causal emotion within yourself. It's the only way to combat it. So if a man, let's say a man who's violent towards women, what he needs to do is he needs to separate himself from women. He, if, even if he's married, he needs to get out of that relationship for a period of time, be by himself, and all of that rage and anger he, he has towards women, he needs to go out with a punching bag and with a bat and connect to that anger and rage and then deep down, get deeper down into the sadness and the grief that he actually feels in his relationships with women that they don't approve of him and they don't accept him and they don't care about him and so forth, right? And just connect with all of that rage and anger. And if he does that, and he does it and asks for God's assistance through that process as well, within a short period of time, that anger and rage will be out of him and he'll be able to move back into the relationship and the spirit connection will also be broken. Because those spirits are now seeing that this man, instead of, not, instead of wanting to blame the woman, this man now is willing to look at the emotion inside of himself and deal with that emotion inside of himself. And a spirit wants you to blame the woman because that's where the spirit is trying to aim all of their rage. And they're just using you as a tool. So if you're a woman getting into rage with men or you're a man getting into rage with women, all that is is allowing yourself to be used as a tool by a group of spirits in the same condition. Okay. I 
Well, no, that's not true. You see, remember right at the beginning when I talked about how the soul works in terms of things? Is it near the swapping time? When I talked about how the soul works with regard to you know, a newborn child, remember you've got the parent's soul, and the parent's soul has all of these emotions in it. You've got the child's soul, and remember there's both parents as well, so you've got the male and the female parent. You've got the child, the child from the moment of conception is absorbing the emotion of the parent, and it enters the child as its own emotion. Uh, this is the damage we do to our children. It enters the child as its own emotion. So instead of thinking about, I don't have anger with men, the truth is you, personally, yes, have anger with men. It isn't from anything you particularly experienced necessarily with men, but it was certainly something that your mother and your grandmother and the grandmother's grandmother and so forth all experienced with men that have just not been resolved and so therefore got passed down from generation to generation to generation into you. And it's an emotion just the same as any other emotion and it's released in exactly the same way by experiencing it, by allowing yourself to notice that it's there and experiencing it. And in the pageant messages, there's a message, uh, if you're versed in the pageant messages, there's a message by Luke talking about multi-generational sin. And my suggestion is have a read of that message, because that message will show you that there is this multi-generational passing down of emotion from grandparents to parents to you, and then if there is unresolved within you to the next generation. I did. I was... Now, can we wait for the... What came to my attention in the break, on my side, which is my mother, father, my oldest brother, who actually removed himself from life at the age of 15. Yep. Then my sister was sexually abused. My brother harmed me. So that's gone down to my daughter. But also on the other side, my once husband, grandfather, sexually abused. Yep. But his son, which is my husband's father, I can't work out why he hasn't or yep. hasn't been revealed. Yeah. But his son, which was my husband, he sexually abused. Yeah. And then so my daughter has been abused. Yep. And Marcus, my son, he has, um, yeah, that was, that was really, yeah, my son has, and perhaps I could tell you something. When Marcus was about three or four, mm -hmm. and he hadn't seen my husband and I doing anything sexually, yep. my niece was at our house. Do you know... At three or four, Marcus was going to have oral sex with my niece. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. A lot of times what they're doing is just acting yeah. out their parents' unresolved emotions, including yeah. the sexual ones. Mm. That's all they're doing. So there's been... And don't forget, there's also <coughs> the spirit influences occurring mm. as well in all of this. So that many of the spirits of multi families with multi-generational incest are actually affecting the next gener generation. Mm and impacting upon their choice to actually commit incest themselves. Yeah, so, I wonder if there's any um, families or generations around that have not been touched or harmed? There's not a single family on earth yet, but many of yours will be. But there's not a single family on earth yet is, who is without this multi-generational abuse. Yeah. The beauty of you learning all of this, and particularly if you're young learning all of this, you can get to a stage where you've dealt with all the multi-generational abuse and the next generation is just going to be free of all of that abuse, which is a beautiful gift that you can give the next generation. Just behind, straight behind you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to take away your thunder. And then... There we go. Can you hear me? There we go in the case of, um, like my case, when you never knew your father at all. Yep. How do you actually get in touch with that end of that? Yeah. The anger or whatever that might exist. The, the key is always to focus on your own emotion. So the problem with going through an analytical process with your parent is that what you're doing is you're still using your mind to resolve issues. The truth is that the law of, the law of attraction sorry, will bring to you triggers to identify any emotions that exist within you. Where they come from really is immaterial in the end. 
the main thing to do is to go into the law of attraction, what it's bringing to you, the trigger, and just focus on the emotion you feel in that triggered situation. When you do that, you will eventually get to what the cause was if you allow the emotion to come to surface and, and become present. So if, for instance, a situation causes a rage to be triggered in you, go outside, beat the hell out, out of a you know, punching bag or something, and then allow yourself to step underneath into the grief with it as you're doing it, and you'll find through that process, you'll become aware somehow as to whether it was something that occurred to you in your life or something that was multi-generational. And it, to be honest, doesn't matter. All that matters is you release the emotion. That's all that matters. And once you release the emotion, you won't no longer have the law of attraction, so you won't get trigger events to trigger that emotion anymore. So that's what tells you you've released the emotion. And on top of that, the benefit to your children is instantaneous, whether they are alive or yet to be born. Yep. So that, that's the main thing to bear in mind. So don't, don't need to use this thing very much in the process. All you need to do is allow the trigger to present to you the emotion. And the emotion then is just needing to be experienced. And once the emotion is experienced and released, the law of attraction won't trigger anything in you anymore. <coughs> If, if your behavior is being influenced and amplified by spirits, but then, but then but, but, but you then process that underlying emotion and, and that, that connection is cut off and they move on to other individuals, is there any benefit for them in that, in, in seeing what you go through and that connection being cut off? Certainly. Many spirits actually notice what you're going through and see you releasing a, a causal emotion. And then what they do is they notice that your body, your spirit body, actually brightens in its condition. So that, that more light comes from your spirit body. They actually see you more brightly. Now, if they knew, and many times there are spirits around them trying to tell them this, that a link, there's a linkage between the brightness of the body and the emotion existing within the soul. Now, if they know about that, and so many of the spirits who are here are hearing this now know that there's that relationship, so when they see you become brighter, they know that you've just become a better person in more condition of love. And so they have learned already, just from you, how to actually do that themselves. Now, whether they choose to do that themselves is a totally another matter. So they might be so addicted to an emotion of sex, or so addicted to a drink, or so addicted to something else, they may need to go through that experience with four or five or ten people before they realise that what's actually going on for themselves. Does that make sense? So they still have free will, but it certainly does have an impact on them in that it gives them an experience of what it means to release an emotion and get into a better condition of love. So it's powerful it's a, for them. It's a nice thing to know. Yeah. Yep. And there was someone else who had their hand up. Uh, oh, that's right. I was just wondering um, about, like, in, in breeding, and um, apparently my family is inbred. Yep. <laughs> so I'm there sure. are many families yeah. that are. Um, and so that's probably true, coming from my country, Australia. Um, wondering what's happening there. Um, many families have a, a, what you would call a culture of incest. Uh, we talked a bit about this when you, Jen asked the question yesterday about a culture of incest that occurs in families. And many families on earth have it, and many cultures even have it. The, the issue is always, usually, uh, the damage that occurs to the person on earth, and then there's heavy spirit influence involved in keeping the culture going. And the only way to prevent all of these things from continuing to go is, is by dealing with the emotions that create them. In terms of the harm to the body of the person, any harm genetically that occurs through any interbreed, interbreeding, if we could call it that in a physical level, can be undone at the soul level. So as you grow in divine love and as you receive more love in your soul, your soul transforms your genetic structure in your body. And so any genetic impurities that are caused through so-called interbreeding are, are automatically gotten rid of anyway. All genetic impurities in your body are actually emotionally caused anyway. So they are all the reflection of emotions that are unhealed. So from God's perspective, if there was no injury, no error world, um, does that mean there's a chance that souls are born to, you know, like 
brother, sister to the same parent? Yeah, there is that chance. And the, the chance is obviously going to be remote with six billion people on the earth, but there is that chance. The, in the, for the original human couple, their children were soulmates. And obviously, if you're in a perfect soul form and then you're in perfect physical form, there is no harm if adults choose to have relationships you know, based around that. That's their free will choice anyway. It's when, it's when a, a father has incest with a child or, or mother with the child, doesn't really matter which, which gender, and that's where there's a lot of emotional damage that occurs uh, to the child and obviously a lot of law of compensation emotions to the father or the mother. So, so in a perfect world with all of us perfect in terms of genetically, because we would all be perfect at the soul level, what would, ha what would happen is if, if soul mates were born to a brother or sister, it, there would be no problems with that brother and sister entering into a relation into a soulmate relationship. Obviously, the problem nowadays is the majority of times, you know, there is terrible sexual abuse and terrible uh, uh, emotions that cause incest that have created a lot of those events. And the laws of the country have been created to try to resolve those terrible abusive issues, but unfortunately, child abuse is still very much rife in the world as well as in this country. I just recently saw like a, um, something from the media and it was about a pedophile who he wrote a book and it ended up in you know, libraries around the country and um, I'm sort of asking how that relates to, you said before, some, some spirits choose to stay in a childlike form and they're active sexually in that way, so if, if there was a perfect world does that mean there'd be adult forms having sex with child-like forms? Or is, is that, you know, what's going on there? And now we're getting into a lot of the what-if things. Yeah. Right? And the problem with a lot of what-if things is that um, a lot of times all, that, all we're doing is discounting love in the transaction. So, in the end, every single person is capable of a loving transaction with another person. A child who is un undeveloped is not capable of making a soul choice if they have lots of soul damage about whether this sexual interaction is a, you know, good for them or not. Right? So for this reason, a lot of times children, um, for instance, a lot of children um, have sexual um, contact with other children, right? Do you stress about that? Most parents don't. Some do because they get all the feelings of shame or guilt about their own childhood and that happening. But if a child has a, has a sexual interaction with another child and it's not spirit influenced, generally most of us are, are okay with that transaction occurring, right? And when I say child, similar ages having some kind of interaction. <coughs> and we view it as experimentation, do we not? Right? Now, now, my question would be, all right, what are the parents' emotions in that situation? Right? Now, a lot of times the parents' emotions will be emotions of shame or guilt or anger or whatever, and that's what that interaction was there to actually trigger, the parents' emotions. Now, imagine for a moment the parents no longer have an emotion of any sexual injury, they no longer have an emotion of you know, injury towards an opposite gender, they no longer have any of those kind of emotions. Imagine that for a moment. And we've got children. Those children would never be acting out sexual events because there's no law of attraction causing them to act out sexual events. By the time they become sexually mature, in the sense that they start getting, in nowadays it's what, 10, 11, 12, right? but years ago it used to be 19, 20, 21, which, which is a lot of the comment of our law of attraction. But if by the time they get sexually mature, they will then develop their own feelings and their own relationship. But it, they'll do it freely in love. And so all of these questions really are then a moot point. Does that make sense? Like they, because everything would be based on love. The problem we're facing today is that everything isn't based on love. It's based on distortions of love and error. And because of that, we ask these technical questions that in the end will all be resolved once we're all in a condition of love and we'll know the answer anyway. Does that, does that sort of help? Like, so, so while I can answer in every single circumstance what's right, what's not, 
it's far better if we just all get into a state of love and we'll know what's right and what's not straight away and we'll be able to do what's right straight away as well. Does abuse in, in a dream, does that sexual abuse in a dream, does that, like, does any experience in the dream, in a dream state or in the spirit world, is that counted as abuse and is that just what's happening? When you wake up from a dream where you or somebody else has been involved in abuse of any kind or violence of any kind or murder of any kind or any other thing that you view as abhorrent in your awake state, allow yourself to feel the emotion that you felt. Because it, it's, the dream is there to trigger the underlying causal emotion. So, so let's say I had a dream of, uh, you know, of incest with my own mother. Well, that, and I wake up feeling this terrible feeling of that ah, yuck, and you know, I wake up with all these feelings. What I need to do is then go into it emotionally. How do I feel? <laughs> yuck, disgusted, shameful, whatever I'm feeling, go into that feeling and allow myself to feel those feelings because that's what the dream was there to trigger. Is, so none of that's a separate event that's just happening? Uh, it that's can be separate events as well, yes. Because I'm trying to work out, because I remember quite a few dreams where there was sort of like a sexual thing happening with this man yep. when I was a child. Yep. And I you know, I was like, well, have I blacked out something that was real or what's going on? Like, yep. I, don't, I doubt that, that that's what's happening to me. Right, so the, the law of attraction is bringing you a dream which, or, or a potential event, either way, you, you can look at it either way, it's bringing you something to trigger an emotion. Everything is about the law of attraction triggering an emotion. So what's the emotion you feel about having sex with an older man? Yes. Okay, so that's the emotion you need to feel. Does that make sense? Why would I like... Well, there's an emotion in you of that. So that's generational. That's, oh, oh, it can be a multi-generational emotion. It can be your father's emotion. It could be... It could, be, it come, could come from any source. <coughs> it doesn't matter how it entered you. All that matters is that you just trust the fact that the law of attraction has brought you the feeling and exposed the feeling within you. And it could be just a simple thing of being disgusted about being a male or even that you end up feeling, but allow yourself to feel it. And all you, when you allow yourself to feel it, it's released and then you won't have those dreams again. If you don't allow yourself to release it, you'll have it again. How, how can we be like Jen? <laughs> you'll have to I ask really Jen. Want to be like Jen. <laughs> yeah. um, Jen Jen doesn't care what you think of her. Now, it's probably not strictly true that I say that, because I know that she does have emotions feeling like she does sometimes worry about what people think of her. But because of the hard life that she's experienced, she, she, she knows that she's just got to honour herself now first, like honour herself above other things. And so she's learnt now to honour her own emotion above other things. And so she gets into her emotion immediately and straight away and just starts feeling the emotion as it's present. Does that make sense? Now, all of us who are not doing that, you can answer the rest for me in a minute, all of us that are not doing that are just not doing that because of blocks. So once we deconstruct all of our blocks, you'll be like Jen. You'll just be feeling the emotion flow and allowing that emotion to flow. Now, Jen doesn't allow all of her emotions to flow, right? But she is pretty good at just getting into them, as you've just saw. Right? Pretty good at allowing them to just get into it. So the key is to allow yourself to do the same thing. Jen, you don't have a huge amount of judgment about yourself doing it, do you? Like, you don't, you don't judge yourself feeling the emotion you just felt so much. I have no capacity to do that. Yeah. So, so one thing, one I suppose advantage that Jen has, and it comes from her terrible experiences, that she's now got this advantage, and that the advantage is that I'm going to feel my emotions because that's all I've got left. That's what she feels inside of her. I've got, I've got nothing other than that to do. Like that's all I can do is feel my emotions, right? And so she just allows herself to go straight into feeling her emotions. Now she doesn't always do that. 
but the majority of the times that's what's going on. And that's, the, that's what you will do, but only once you've released the blockages. And that's why I say, and what I've said in the past is, getting at the blockages is sometimes the hardest thing. That's the thing that's a real difficult thing to do. And Graham, first thanks, and then. Just to add what Jen was saying, from my perspective, how I see her doing it is, is her emotions are very childlike. Yes. She doesn't have the judgmental thing that adults have about their emotions. Yes. She she doesn't think of the consequences or, the, or, or, or what's going to happen if she experiences this emotion. Yes. She's just like a child in that sense, you know. Yeah. And, and part of that, I think, is probably due to the damage that she's been stunted in some way. But it's an advantage. It's an advantage. In the in this system. Yep. And that's that's why like become like a child is such an important thing. And when a child doesn't say, Oh, I'm in the supermarket, I can't cry now. <laughs> Does it? Like, oh no, I'm down the street, no, I can't cry now. You know. Oh, I'm embarrassed, I can't throw a tantrum on the floor. You know. They don't say that, they don't even consider that. Eventually, that's where we will get to. The fact that we won't consider that. But once you get to that point, ironically, all of the emotions you feel will be perfect anyway, and they will be loving. So that on the path, on the on the divine love path, that's the way it works. And uh, I just say something. Yeah, sure. Um, along with all her damages, she's given us kids a lot of her strength as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And one of them is to feel your emotions without judgment. So. Yeah. I'm just going to um, go back to something previously actually. Yep. Um, you were speaking about a uh, spirit influence like the mother influencing the daughter mm -hmm. in a relationship. Um, is it possible that a previous partner who's still alive, who's very, very angry at you, can also have kind of like spirit influence in your present relationship? Yeah, certainly. Let's say there's a previous partner on earth. This is yourself. The spirit of his partner has spirits around him. Right? You were in the relationship at some point with this previous partner. This man has lots of, say, rage towards you. These spirits, if they can, they will actually project their rage towards you and try to influence you as well. Right. Now again, if the lady here allows herself to feel her emotions of why she accepts rage from men and digs underneath that and, and starts to feel some of her emotions about being oppressed and being, um, you know, the ways she feels with men, unloved, unwanted and so forth, if she releases those emotions, this projection will have no influence whatsoever. And spirits go away when they know they've got no influence anymore. They only stick around you when they know they can influence you. Because that's where they get their joy from. If you could call it joy, right? But that's where they get the feeling of power from. So, so the key is, again, always for the person who's the object of the rage to experience their emotions about it. Because it's a law of attraction at work still. But you are right. Spirits with a person who's been in a past relationship can certainly influence you in your current relationship even through this connection that you have. Yep. Thank you. Up the back there, thanks. And then. Um, Multi-generational uh, abuse, I'm thinking, um, is there any subtle ways you can see it happening um, to someone quite close? Um, I, I guess I would say my brother and I, um, same sort of environment, uh, whereas one myself has tended to want to work on himself for a long time, and he's yeah. Uh, whereas my brother has it, and I see that it is pattern recurring, and yeah. that worries me. I've seen it ruined my marriage because I see it when you get through the second. Uh, and also, it's the effects on those children. I can see those patterns. I oh, hear patterns. And some of the patterns we grew up with recurring, and you get to see that. Yeah. And firstly, it's going to be very difficult to help a person directly who doesn't want your assistance. 
and in fact, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's actually in disagreement with free will to help a person who doesn't want your assistance. However, you can pray for them to want your assistance. And most people on earth totally underestimate the power of prayer. What happens with prayer, oftentimes, the way God responds to prayer is that he hears signed spirits who are in really, really good condition, often high celestial spirits, to help different people to protect them. So if you know, for example, that a certain person is heavily influenced or potentially could be heavily influenced by a spirit, you can pray for that spirit who's influencing the person. And that spirit will feel your prayer of love for them, which will have a powerful effect on that spirit. And also you can pray for the protection of the person themselves. Now, God will then assign protection to that person, additional protection. However, if the person, through their own free will, doesn't want to accept any assistance, those spirits will have the same limitation that you have, and that is that they won't be able to help very much. Right? All they can do is help by thoughts and, and a few other things. Um, if the middle person... If you can use the mic really up close to me. Okay. Um, if that middle person does not respond... You need to be closer to the mic. Um, the, I'm thinking more of the children and the pattern that because they're at this stage, they don't have any control over what's happening in their environment. And if, in this case, my brother doesn't want to change his behaviour, how can they then influence those children? Um, I'm talking to someone who's about 15 too, so they're not young children there. Well, Again, the only way you can influence anybody is if they want to speak with you. So that, that applies to a child as well. Now, if you speak to a child and the parent prevents you from doing that, then the only other thing that can be done is some... Like, if, if I can see that a child is being abused, I don't care who it is, and I don't care what I'm meant to do, my first, my first desire is to get the child out of harm's way. And to be frank, um, I will go to the police uh, with the information I have or I'll go to a healthcare professional with the information I have to do that. If that's not the situation, but you feel the child's being harmed... The patterns that are being learned, um, that's going to... That's what I'm saying. There is very, very little you can do that's harmonious with love aside to, from praying for the law of attraction to change for that child. And when you do... And again... Prayer is going to be a major thing. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I'm going to start screaming here at the moment, mate. Oh, Alright, there's been a few people who've walked out to get. Yeah. Well, can they scream into a pillow or somewhere quiet so that I don't get to get caught? <laughs> that just shows you yeah. one of the problems you face. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with somebody screaming? Yeah. So. What just happened for the sake of the people who might be viewing this tape is we just had a very angry policeman come to visit us telling us that we shouldn't be screaming outside and that we have to scream into a pillow, which is an interesting rule that he's now just made for us, which I'm sure we'll be addressing at some point in the future. And my suggestion though in this case is all we need to do is just probably call some of the neighbours yeah. and find out which ones of them got upset about it and just tell them all occasionally, once every month that's around about, there may be some people screaming at this place yeah. and uh, and we're allowed to, it's Peter's property and he's okay with that sort of thing. But isn't that so interesting? Yeah, yeah but well, there could be somebody who began to kill somebody and, and they were yeah. just worried. Okay, okay, don't worry. Uh, and they were called police and that's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, so interesting. And they get angry because they got called for nothing. Exactly, that's why he was angry, he just got called for nothing. He was having a barbie. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been having sex with his wife, but... He's going to watch this tape one day. <laughs> yeah, but can you see too that... Um, the free expression of your emotions in the environment we live in today is just... It, it's automatically assumed to be bad. Yeah. Automatically assumed to be bad. Because and that is something that badly needs to change on this planet. Badly needs to change. But if you're the neighbour, and you think some danger is happening, If you're the neighbour, you need to first feel your emotion 
<laughs> about your own law of attraction, which is somebody screaming in this terrible fear you feel. So connect to that first, right? Then wouldn't the most logical thing do to give Peter a call, if you were in love, you'd give Peter a call and say, you know, is there a problem there? Second Peter. All right? But no, that, these are the most logical things to do, are they not if you're in love? Then if Peter didn't answer the phone, and you know, and you had you came down and visited. Like, why wouldn't you come and visit the place if you're a neighbour? Because you're afraid, right? So what you would do is you go and visit your neighbour. If you were concerned, you go and visit your neighbour. Say, Look, I just heard someone screaming. Is everything all right, right? And if they said, Oh yeah, no, this is the explanation, or someone's still screaming, you'll be able to see that quite easily. And you'll be able to all just get resolved without even having to bother the poor policeman, right? So him being involved was just a factor of somebody's fear and somebody's lack of love. In the end, one of the neighbours is afraid and also has a lack of love towards others. Because if they had a, didn't have a lack of love, they would have firstly just approached Peter and tried to find out what the problem was. And they'll find out soon enough. But obviously sometimes the neighbours are actually angry too. So what do they want to do instead? They want to stir up a bit of trouble. They want to make sure, you know, and so there's a lot of different alternative solutions for their, in their mind, you know. Or if they're afraid, what are they going to feel? Something bad's happening here, you know, and, and, and not feel their own fear and just go into it. So I agree, yes, if someone's screaming, find out, but, but how do you do it in love? There's a lot of things you can do besides calling someone with authority to come and tell somebody to scream into a pillow. But with a little bit of foresight, if the person who was expressing their emotions could have held it, just like they might do if they had to go to the toilet. What are you suggesting? Oh, well, they, we've, no. got, we've got four bedrooms in the house. No. Wouldn't it be better for them to do Sure, that? go into the four bedrooms, but they don't know. None of the people here have been told you're allowed to go into other bedrooms to process an emotion. That's why yeah. I'm bringing it up now. No worries. Yeah, but but no, do not hold on to an emotion. Do not hold on to emotions. You hold on to emotions, all you do is suppress them, and you know the suppression creates another layer on top of it, and now you'll find it doubly hard to access later on. Do not hold on to your emotions. So I know that's a, you know, it's a really important thing to learn, that every single time you hold on to an emotion, you are just placing another layer on top of the emotion, and it's going to be so di much more difficult to access that emotion at another time. <coughs> um, Oh, yes, right after that, thanks. I finally, finally attracted a man into my life. Um, I know I've been married to him now for the last 34 years. Yeah. And he's the most wonderful person. And what attracted me was his Christ-like qualities. What I call his Christ-like qualities. Yep. And he had them all. And he's absolutely besotted with me. I can't see what he sees. <laughs> no, absolutely besotted. Yeah. And he, uh, it is true. And he um, has got. Uh, Are you absolutely besotted with him too? I was. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was. Yep. I think I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. No worries. And um, he has got a progressive paraplegia from a broken neck. And um, we just fell in love. We really did. And he said to me, he said, oh, you know, we were talking about marriage, and he said, really, he said, it's not so good because he said it's never ever. She always ever looked at the porcelain that's never actually looked me in the eye. So I thought, well, he's not, you know. So anyway, we got married, and for 25 years it turned out that, yes, he was able to have a sexual relationship with me, and really very, very good. And then the parent pledge just set in really badly yeah. the last couple of years, like, um, it's been very dry, 12 years or so. Yeah. And it's only about six weeks ago that he was sleeping and I came into the bedroom and I saw him sleeping and I just jumped on top of him, sat on his stomach and I choked a little bit out of him. I had him by the throat and I choked him. I want to kill him. Yeah. 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 I really want to kill him. Yeah. And he looked at me, first of all, he must have thought that I was having a bit of a play around with him or something or whatever. Yeah. And then when you could see the rage in my eye, I could see he went to the bathroom and, and uh, had a cry and came back. Yep. Next day he said to me, he said, you're a restless little bit of a 
all around you. And that's all it is. I've never been able to say sorry yeah. doing, for doing that. Do you understand what was happening inside of yourself? Rage. Do you know why that rage was there? No, I don't. Yeah. No. And um, when you when you are a constant you, when you're in a constant situation that's never going to change, or you feel will never change, it's very, very difficult because after a while you become resentful of the situation. And so what's happened inside of yourself is, is there's some resentment that's built up over a period of time inside of yourself about the situation you're in with, with your husband. And, and because of that, this rage built up to such a state that now a spirit could also influence the rage. Do you follow me? And, and that's the, what actually triggered that event. So what that's telling you is that there is some rage inside of you that's built up about the powerlessness that you feel now in this situation. And it's just not there. Yeah. I'm spouting, I feel I'm spouting all the top of words, how I love him, and it doesn't matter, and he said, well, you've got to put me in a home, and all these sort of type of things. But The reason why you're feeling nothing's there is because you've had so many years without sexual contact, and so many years, too, without the... Without, um, of, of caring, I suppose you could say, being in a situation that you feel powerless to change. And, and the reason why you stayed in that situation is because you felt guilty about, about getting your needs met, about, about feeling what you feel and getting your needs met. And this is a very hard situation oftentimes, but what happens is that the anger inside of us builds up and builds up and builds up until a point that it reaches sort of like a crescendo. And, and it just becomes so overpowering that we act upon it. Right? And usually spirits are then connected through the process and, and help the action as well. So my suggestion is to, is to look at all the areas of your life. So maybe when you go home, make a list of all the areas in your life for the last 12 years or so that you've felt unfulfilled and start addressing those areas with your husband. Now obviously he's not going to be able to fulfill some of those areas and you are going to have to look at alternatives to getting those feelings fulfilled or deal with the emotions that you're experiencing and release those emotions. Either one will need to, be, need to occur. If you don't do that, these feelings will just build up and build up into so much rage and also so much resentment that any feeling that was ever existing in your heart towards him will have died. Right. So you can certainly undo that. Because obviously if you love someone once, you can love them again, right? So that, and, and it's your choice what you do. But at the moment what's happening is you've suppressed yourself in order to love the other. And now, because of that, you don't love yourself or the other. And that's what's happened through this. So what you need to do is start actually addressing this love of self issue that's been suppressed for this time. Now, that may mean doing what he suggests. Like he suggested to you to, to, for him to go into a home so you can have some feeling of freedom. You may actually, if you deal with some guilt and whatever other emotions you have about that, you may actually find that that leaves you free now to enjoy some things in your life and will actually relieve some of this pressure. He, there may be other solutions to the problem that you two together can agree to. But in the end, staying in the situation as it is is just going to increase your anger and it's going to increase the distance that you feel between yourself and your husband. And that is going to be even more damaging then than any damage that's already occurred. So my suggestion is really urgently take stock of what's going on and change it this week. Because you, you can start writing down some things you can change and change them this week. And the problem is that you're breaking. Now you're worried about breaking him, but you're breaking. No, it's not okay. Love of yourself doesn't sacrifice, like love of another doesn't sacrifice itself for love of yourself. 
If you're sacrificing yourself for another, you're not loving either yourself or them. He can feel your resentment. He can feel that building up. Don't believe that he can't. He can. And it's your guilt that's binding you, and you need to release this guilt so that you can at least start to have some of your own life back. Right? Otherwise, you're just going to get into a more resentful and more resentful and more resentful state. And he can already feel this from you. He wouldn't be making the suggestions he's already making if he wasn't already feeling these emotions from you. Sorry, getting very clingy. Clingy, yes. Yeah. Yep. He can feel your distress. He can feel your distress. And of course he is worried about what that's going to mean. But at some, at what the problem is for you is that you have been loving him and sacrificing a lot of things within yourself. Now, there is a law of attraction going on too. And that is that um, you know, there is an emotion from your childhood of wanting other people to, to fit into your life. There is an emotion there as well. You did enjoy, right from the beginning, the feeling that he was besotted with you. And that emotion is an emotion you need to allow yourself to experience and work your way through as well. Because, to be frank, the being besotted was in a one, mainly in one direction. Well, my mum told me that my, my father was besotted with me and he was executed when I was six years old. Yes. And that's, that's why you search for a man who is besotted with you as well. So there's quite a few emotions inside of yourself to allow yourself to work through. My, my feeling is start working through the ones with your husband as soon as you possibly can because it's going to just get more and more out of hand if you don't. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Your mother? Yeah. yeah. Okay, does that help any? <coughs> Try, th my suggestion, this week, Yeah, but see, now you're talking from your guilt. Yeah. <coughs> now you're talking from your guilt. And you're not focused on what's going on inside of you. You're focused on what's going on inside of him. And my suggestion is you're going to need to start focusing on what's going on inside of you. Otherwise, this situation is going to get quite out of hand for you. Yeah, I couldn't get out of the house after about three weeks because I thought I might attack somebody else. Exactly. You're, you're even now worried about whether it will happen again. And because I didn't know what got over me. Mm. Well, what got into you is this resentment building and building and building and building and building and building until the point, it gets to the point that it's so great that it's easier for now a spirit just to connect to you and get, get rid of the source of the problem, which, which for them is your husband. And, and the truth is it's not the source of your problem. There's emotions inside of itself you do need to work your way through but you're not going to be working your way through them if you continue acting upon your guilt and just doing whatever you feel he needs. Because he certainly doesn't... He can feel your emotions. And this is the thing you're forgetting. He can feel that you're not loving him. That's why he's become more needy. He can feel that. So talk to him about that. Talk to him about how you feel. How, how, it's, how hard it's been for you. Release some of that emotion. Because if you don't, it's just going to get worse. You've never put yourself first. No. And it's going to be difficult for you to do this. But, but I'm, and I'm, by the way, not suggesting to put yourself first. I'm suggesting you need to put yourself at the same place as you've put him. Right? The truth is what you've done is you've done everything for, for him and you're not giving yourself any space to do anything for yourself. And that's where the, cause of, that's where the underlying cause of this problem begins. Um, when that person came up on the door, it sent me into a, a state of terror. Yes. Yeah. The policeman. Mm. Yeah. 
How many of you had that response seeing a law officer at our door? Yeah, quite a number. Good law of attraction for you. Yeah. What was the feeling? Fear of that you're in trouble. Yeah. 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 Which can you see that that's what's capping a lot of your emotion? This bit same feeling. So it's a very good law of attraction of it to to demonstrate to to see what caps your emotion inside of you. Yeah. Yeah. So allow yourself to feel that terror, and then deeper into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Often terror is a capping emotion over the rest of our emotions. So terror, fear are very, very high powered capping emotions. And what we need to do is identify them and allow ourselves to feel that terror. To feel terror, you will shake like you're shaking, you will go into cold sweat like you're going into, you will, you know, you will feel these terrible feelings of sort of like your gut getting all churned up and, and everything in your heart, your heart starts beating fast. This is a terror-based feeling, and the key is to just breathe and allow yourself to feel that feeling, because it's a childhood terror being released. It's about authority and getting into trouble, um, and in this case, for experiencing emotion. Yeah, so just allow that to flow. On that note, EJ, I expected the police to come because it was so loud out there. You know, it's like somebody's going to hear it. That was where I was going with it. Yeah. And then they came. So yeah. maybe I killed them. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, when you were talking about the spirit influence a little while ago, I had this incredible revelation. First of all, I didn't get married until I was 60 because I had so many injuries around trusting that dynamic and couldn't even come close to doing it until I met this guy who is, you know, really safe. So. But then we got married, and I spent two years, like, just raging. Mm -hmm. And then I would have opposite days where I wouldn't be raging, and I would look at him and I'd go, I'm not like this. And so that was a classic uh, spirit coming through me on those days when I was raging, because it felt like another person. Yes. But I was, uh, because of my injuries, was allowing for that to occur because of stuff that happened with my father, right? Mm -hmm. Because a couple, about three months ago, I was pulling the belt out of his blue jeans to do the laundry, and I remembered my father when I was a teenager, and he'd come and got me out of the car because I was out with these rowdy kids. Brought me in the house, took his belt out of his pants, was whipping me with it, and said, bad things will happen. Bad things will happen. And it's like I'm just getting this whole revelation about how he just completely infused all that on me. Yep. And so I let it out all with Brian, but thank God it's, it stopped after a couple of years. You know, I kind of ran out of gas for Or you could say, thank God Brian was in a place where he would accept all he your anger without doing anything. I'm going away, I'm so grateful. Yeah. But, you know, if you just gave me so much insight into that, because I've looked at it and looked at it and went, how could I have been two, I was two different people. Yes. And so that was a spirit yes. influence. Yes. Okay. And, that, and that's so important to see that, see, if, if you had gone out and beaten a bag and yelled and screamed, yeah. rather than yelling at Brian, right. what would have happened is that spirit would have lost its power in the transaction, and so it would have left you quite rapidly. Right. But the fact is that spirit wanted you to yell at Brian, because that spirit is an angry lady as well, and all she wants to do is dump on men who, who, who she, know, she knows will take it without bopping her back. Was this my mother who, you know, she put up with all my raging father. Was that her? Because she died about 15 years ago. What do ago. you feel? I think it was. Wow. The plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all, all she's doing is taking out this terrible rage that she feels. And because it's your mother, obviously, there's a connection with that rage inside of you and away she goes. And it's, it's a terrible experience. Because it, in the end, you also feel so guilty afterwards, yeah. right? You feel like, what have I just done? This man, I love this man, and what have I just done? I've just, like, I've just yelled and screamed at him for an hour or two, and, you know, where's he going to go now? And, 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 mortified. and the fact is, if Brian had more self-worth, he probably wouldn't have put up with that for very long. No. Now, which is actually the goal of your mother. 
Explain. Your mother's goal was to break your relationship. Okay. You shouldn't be with men. Okay. Her feelings are you shouldn't be with a man. Men are men are bastards. Does that make sense? Yeah. Her, and her goal was to, to do to just project all this rage but also to break up the relationship. Exactly the scenario that I talked about. That's it. The reason why I talked about that scenario is because there's quite a number of mothers and fathers in the spirit world trying to do that with some of you. that question and then it gives you a bit of time to think about the rest. Um, your, the sexual abuse that you attracted when you were young was totally the result of your mother's law of attraction. Your mother had, had been sexually abused when she was young. No, she never. She still has trouble even dealing with it now. Which is the reason why you saw it as the throat chakra issue. Because it, she doesn't want to speak her truth. But She's had this sexual abuse when she was young, and she did not resolve it. And because that emotion entered you at the time that you were conceived, any men around her that were, were sexually abusive in nature would now abuse you. The men would be attracted through her law of attraction, but they'll now abuse the child, which is what their emotional injury is all about. Your mother now has this huge rage, of course, towards me. And and still has this rage and and of course that's also entered you so you also have this rage towards men and so the rage isn't towards the man you're currently with it's actually towards all men and it needs to be released and the way to release it is by doing what similar to what Jen did and what you just did and so forth and just allow yourself to experience that. But connect to it. it the sexual abuse issues that have happened when you were a child why were the result of your mother's law of attraction. Yep. I had this realisation that I How you can get away from men, how you can get away from men. And this is the conundrum that you have with sexual abuse, you see, because on one hand you've got these sexual desires that you want to have a satisfied, fulfilling relationship with a person, and then on the other hand there's all these other emotions, which are like anger, rage, how can I get running away, and all of those things. And so it's very, very difficult to work your way through these emotions. And the key is always to focus on the personal emotions and work your way through those personal emotions. Because as soon as you project them at the other person, you've now just taken away all of your own power, but you've also now created a situation that's going to destroy relationships just, just by doing that. It's so important to heal these emotions, these emotions of intergenerational abuse. It's such an important emotion to, to heal. It's going to change your life if you have experienced these things when you heal them completely. Yeah. And I'm talking not only just about like, like incest or abuse, but also about abuse from spirits or even sexual projections from men. If you can heal these emotions within you as women, you'll find your life will change markedly. And you'll start attracting men that don't do those kind of things uh, at you. There are plenty of men who don't, by the way. And I'd like 
Yes, and this and is this is a, a barrier between, particularly because Peter's in the room. Oh, I love Peter. I've come to in the last few weeks resolve deep resentments that I've had, yep. and been able to say to him for the first time, deep gratitude for he's the one person in my life that I know has tried to help me to break free. Yeah. Mm. And and. But I hear when a policeman came to the door, I I heard Peter sound just like my father <laughs> exactly. all over, all yeah. over again. Yeah. And I just just, just <laughs> got, got out to sc sc scream about my relationship with my parents at this Got, got more of attraction brings the same sound of my father yeah. through my brother. So how is it how is it that three children can be raised in a family with parents and be be so different? Mm -hmm. yep. um, the answer to your particular dynamic in your family is very complex, Jenny. The the emotional injuries of your father and the emotional injuries of your mother were very different from each other. You follow me? They were very different from each other, the emotional injuries between the father and the mother. And the emotional injuries that they had played out with all of your children in different ways. The firstborn child, which I gather is Peter, is the child generally that they focus all of their attention on initially because he's the only one born, he's the only one present. And the firstborn child in a, in a situation like your family's becomes responsible for the parents' emotions. So the firstborn child learns to parent the parents. Do you follow me? Now it's very damaging for Peter to have had this happen to him because now he can't connect to his own emotions very well, which he would freely admit. So, but the firstborn child often gets this projection from parents that, that, that you are responsible for all of our emotions. Now because Peter was a male, the firstborn child was a male, your father had no emotional injuries that could play out with Peter so much. And your father didn't have any feelings of competition towards Peter. Right? If he did, Peter would be in a totally different situation than he is now. Then I, I believe, who was the next? Well, Philip. Philip was the next. And when Philip was born, he was born on your mother's birthday. It's a very key point that you raise because your mother is, by this stage, your mother has dealt with years of abuse from her husband. Okay? So what is she feeling towards men now? So when, when Peter was born, she, she, there was less abuse that she'd experienced than by the time Peter's brother was born, Philip was born. And on top of that, this male child was born on her special day. The day when she got the focus of attention. 
Now, like now, she no longer gets the focus of attention on that day, and who takes away the focus of attention? A man, a male. So now she's got lots of projections of emotions at her son, her second son, not the first son, because he never took away that. Does that make sense? And by this stage, she's so sick and tired of coming home and getting raped, or him coming home and raping her, I'm talking about your dad with your mother, that she's now trying to detune from men altogether. Right? So Peter at least received some emotions from mum that were good. But by the time Philip comes along, what's happening now? There's very, very few projections of emotions going at Philip that are any good, that are approving of him being a male. But your father's emotions yet haven't had the chance to play out. You were born and you're a girl. Your father has huge incestual type feelings towards women. He, he, is constant, he was constantly flirtatious when he was married. He had no concern for a woman's needs or, or feelings about a woman's wants or desires. And on top of that, he was abusive towards your mother and often raped her. So now, now your mother, and this is a problem you face, your mother is sick to death of being raped by her husband. She feels she needs to stay in the relationship. She's sick to death of her second child because he's taken away any semblance of good feelings that she ever had, which was on a birthday. Now you come along, and now you're an opportunity. You're an opportunity to substitute her in your relationship with your father. So I'm just being, I'm being frank about their situation. So she chose, and your father chose, you as the surrogate sexual partner. So, and I feel so, so sad for that occurring um, So you received so much abuse and so much lack of protection from both parents. And so your issues are primarily with both parents, of course. And there's this terrible rage in you, uh, of course, which is understandable. And, and can you see how now not only were those things all different, but now the personalities of each of your children were different too. They were all different because God created all different personalities in every soul. So how you responded to this abuse became very, very different. Your brother became rageful. He became resentful of his older brother, and he became rageful towards your mother. He became resentful of his older brother because his older brother was the only one that seemed to have any type of relationship with his mother. You follow me? So now he feels resentful towards Peter. He feels resentful towards his mother because his mother doesn't give him the love that he really wants. And he is now, and I've met your brother obviously, and he's now in a terrible rage as a result of that. Then you come along and you receive the worst of everything in the sense that your mother now wants to substitute you as your father's sexual partner. And he, she doesn't care that that's happening to you. And your father, and your father doesn't care either. And that's why you've experienced the terrible experiences that you've experienced at their hands. And then of course there was these events because of this, because of the law of attraction, because of this, you were then kidnapped when you were three years of age, you were abused and sexually assaulted by the man at the, uh, at the race course where I appeared to you. You were the only one my whole life that I saw love. Yeah. The only one. Well, the truth is there was no one else around you that had any love. And so... Um, The man, was, the man who was assaulting her was going to murder her. So, so when, when I appeared, he was frightened and he left. And, and Jen was managed to escape. And the sad thing was that when she escaped and went back to her family, her father said he didn't want to do anything about it. So it just added to the abuse. So Jen's had a very difficult 
um, life. And, and this is the reason why the family dynamics are there, because the previous generation of both, fam both sides of the family, your mothers and your fathers, did some major damage to their own children <coughs> in a similar fashion. And that's why you've got great-grandfathers, grandfather, father, all having very, very similar emotional injuries. And you've got great-grandmother, mother, mother, you know, great-grandmother, mother, all having similar emotional injuries. But it does a terrible, devastating, uh, terribly devastating thing to, um, to you. And this is where often we need courage just, and just this connection to God to get just through all of those events. But every single thing that these parents have done and the grandparents have done and the great parents have done, there is a law of compensation effect upon them. And they will need to go through this process of clearing through all of their emotions. And they can do it just like you can. They can do it with God. And the faster they do it, the better of off it is now going to be for you. But the good thing, Jen, for you is that you're not waiting for that. And, and one good thing about your personality is you don't wait around for anyone. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing. And that's what's allowing you now to process these emotions and work your way through them. So it's so good that you have the desire to do that. So many of you, like I've related just a little bit of Jen's background, which probably many of you weren't aware of. Um, and you get an idea of what happens in a family with multi-generational issues and problems. And, and the key with all of this is just, if we can deal with our emotions now, we can get through all of this, with God's help we can get through all of this, and in the end come out the other side, and that damage will not be perpetuated anymore. And so, my feelings are that if you have the courage to face your own emotional injuries, and you have the courage to step your way through them, and you have the courage to connect with God through that process, then you will come out this other side in a very beautiful state, feeling you'll remember these events, but you won't have any emotional signature to them anymore in your life. They will no longer affect your law of attraction. They will no longer affect your life. You will be in a state of bliss that you can experience if you have the courage to work your way through these emotions. And so my suggestion is to do what Jen's doing and have the courage to work your way through them. Can I just have a mic? Sorry, Mike, I know you cry. That's OK. Um, uh, quite a few questions came up just then. Um, first, I was going to ask why, why you said usually the first child that's born bears sort of this taking a parent role. And then I had this realization, because I'm the second born, that the reason why my brother was born, he had some damage when he was born, and I'm not quite sure how you would class it. But I've always felt that I was the one that bear the parent everything mm -hmm. when it came to the parents. Mm -hmm. And The other thing that came up for me just then that I was going to ask was, it's just slipped my mind now. Because you're feeling the first emotion, which is good. Yeah, there's, there's two things here, but yeah. um, the second thing is, why, what is this thing like, you said once before, like, the people, you're talking in reference to the people who had to pay to do emotional work. Uh, and. I, I'm referring that to why would God make any soul without the courage to do this work that we need to do? And, and you, in, in, in that you're saying, um, if you have the courage, you know, it feels like, well, can't we just pray for the courage and then it's there? Yes. And that's my feeling now. Yes. And I'm really just been focusing on that. That's been my sole focus for the last while. Yes because I just felt I've had no courage to do anything. Yeah, and you're dead right. You can pray for any quality to grow in you from God. So, so if you don't feel you have the courage, start praying for courage. And, and you'll receive it in order to process through these emotions. 
many of you are facing emotions that are based around terror or fear-based events. And, and the key is that you are going to need courage, and a lot of times you don't feel it, right? You don't feel courageous. And the key is to ask God for that courage. Remember that God built you in such a way that you can cope with everything. God built you that way. And, and God will certainly give you all the help and assistance you want if you want to feel your emotions. God will certainly do that as well. And that, that brings me to another question was about people who are so damaged, people who are maybe Down syndrome or um, who can't, who are not there mentally. Uh, how is that going? How is that going to happen on the soul level for them? Are they just going to feel what's happening on the earth now and resonate with that, and then be able to work through it without having any intellectual, like AJ, telling us what, what we need to do? Are they just going to know it through? Well, I'm very hopeful that you'll get in the condition where you want to go around and heal those people. So we'll have the ability to take away that damage so they can heal yeah. themselves. Yes, any genetic damage, you have ability when you're at one with God to heal instantly. So any genetic damage can be healed instantly <coughs> and then you can connect with them. And the fortunate thing for many people that have experienced things like Down syndrome and those kind of things where they're not always conscious of what's going on in their surroundings, and not that a Down syndrome is like that, a Down syndrome is a bit of a mixture of two, but there are other types of things that they're not fully conscious of what's going on in their surroundings. What actually happens is they don't absorb the emotion of that, they only, sorry, they only absorb the emotion of that surrounding. They don't absorb the intellectual messages and all the other things, and so often they have a lot less damage as a result, they have a lot less blockages to feeling their emotion. And so when you heal them, they then can process through things very rapidly because they don't have the blockages that have been established over our life of years and years and years of suppression. So is the only reason they're not dealing with that stuff now is because they haven't the desire in their heart to, to do that? No, the, a, Down's, a Down's child is a result of the, of the multi-generational law of attraction of parents, grandparents and so forth. So again, it's due to emotions that are unhealed in the parents and grandparents and so forth being passed down to the child and being passed in a way that has affected, affected the genetic structure of the amalgamation of the sperm and the egg cell. And so it's created a, a, a genetic problem which, is then, which then the child is incarnated into. That genetic problem can be repaired and then the child <coughs> can have a normal soul response to, to everything rather than through an impaired response. The actual impaired responses generally are, uh, save the children from even more distress than a normal child would normally receive. So actually there are many, many Down syndrome children. I've, I often walk past Down syndrome children say in a shopping centre and can feel their condition and a person their age often is in a much worse condition than the, than the Down syndrome person in their age. And I can feel the differences in their condition. And so often a person who's got Downs might be in a second sphere condition already, whereas a person in the same age normally might, would normally be in a first sphere condition. And it's because of the, because not all of the emotions have impacted them. So they're actually, in a way, their own condition is saving them from, from worse things occurring in many cases. And when a Down syndrome child, for instance, chooses to do damaging things to others, if the, choi the choices are very much based around the parents' unresolved emotions. So God actually attributes those emotions through the law of conversation to the parent, not to the child. So, so that's one other thing to bear in mind. Now, it's half past five. I just wanted to make a few comments in closing. Uh, first thing is that next week we have a... Uh, we have a Friday night session, which is about a, going to be a mediumship session. It'll be down at the Bracken, Bracken Ridge Community Hall, isn't it? That's what it's called, uh, in Brisbane, the uh, north side of Brisbane. And that'll be just for two hours on the Friday evening from uh, 7 to 9. Um, those of you who are very interested in developing uh, mediumship or, or healing type skills need to come along. But, but um, one thing to bear in mind is I'll be very focused on your emotions. And I'm going to be very, very frank about them. So if you come along, be very prepared to be confronted. 
right? My goal in those sessions is to confront those of you who have mediumship abilities and skills to help you develop those skills as rapidly as you can and to see what's truly going on in the usage of those skills in your own life. And so the first session will probably be talking a lot about your personal experiences with mediumship and then I'll be very frank with you about what's really going on in those experiences and then we'll, from that session onwards, every month we'll have one of those sessions and hopefully develop those skills through the development of your emotions. So that's Friday night. Saturday we'll be doing a session on anger and, and how important anger is in terms of actually connecting to and connecting through anger into underlying causal emotion. And then on Sunday there'll be another question and answer session. The first half will be about anger-based situations and issues. And the second half I'll throw open to more general types of questions. The following month I'll be only having two days uh, sessions. There'll be a day here. We haven't, I haven't sorted out the actual date at this point, but I'm thinking it will be the 24th of uh, May in Brisbane. Mm -hmm. And didn't we say the 17th? Uh, or the 16th, which one was it? It was the 16th and 17th, or was one, it? One of those. One of those days it was. Uh, I haven't sorted that out just yet, so uh, we'll sort that out as well. And the sessions from then on are going to be about developing your relationship with God. So I feel that many of you now are open to your emotions through all of the discussions that we've had. Proof in point is that many of you have been dealing with your emotions even in the session, which is really lovely. And so you are now very, very open to developing your relationship with God because your emotions are now open. So you could say that what we've dealt with up to now has been sort of like a foundation or a groundwork now for us to start building our relationship with God upon. And so there will be a series of sessions about developing your relationship with God. And uh, they will be coming up over the next months. And altogether there's nine of them, so uh, it will probably be happening until the end of the year. And occasionally I'll be interdispersing those sessions with sessions about other matters. But uh, the focus for the rest of this year is going to be, for me, is going to be helping you develop your relationship with God. You might not think there'd be too much I could say about that, but uh, <laughs> there's quite a lot that can be said about that. So um, hopefully you'll enjoy those sessions when they come up. So next month there'll only be two days that uh, we'll be with you. And then the following month, uh, we'll probably do a similar thing. Uh, there might, I think we've teed up maybe three days or two, two days, days here yeah. and one yeah. day in Brisbane or something like that is what we're going to do the following month. And that, the reason for that is that it gives myself and Mary, we've had very little time home in two months. Um, we've only had five days actually. <laughs> and, and obviously, you know, that puts a lot of strain on us in terms of dealing with our own emotions. So, so we're needing some times at home where we can work through our own stuff and so that's the reason why we're doing it that way. Um, I would like to also thank you very much for your donations as well. Um, for the, thank you so much for that. It's, uh, it's what myself and Mary live on and, uh, and any funds that are generally left over I generally try to pull back into getting some things done. Some of you are new or have been new today and you may be interested in taking home a CD with you that you may not have had of all the channelings. Uh, there's natural love channelings and divine love channelings on the CD. And uh, where are they at the moment? Just up there in that little hole in the middle of the place. AJ, there's a, a list out on the table if anyone wants to put their oh, email address. If any of you are new and you want to put your email address to uh, be contacted in the future, there's a list out on the table. There's only, I've only got four or five of them left of these. There's a lot. There's, there's, a, lot, there's a lot in the cupboard. Um, if, you, if you haven't had them, my suggestion is have them. There's a lot of channeled messages on them. They can only be read on a computer. They're not voice messages. So if you haven't got a computer, there's not much point really getting them. My suggestion, if you haven't got a computer, you can still take them and you can take them into a place like Officeworks and actually get one of them printed out. You might have to ask some of the others here which ones they found the best to print out because there's about six or so thousand pages of text on there and they'll be able to print out a file for you for eight, ten bucks or whatever and you'll be able to have it to, to read. So that's... that's